Um, hey, my name is Nick. I work at Movil, and today we're going to go on talking about Lint. So, what is Lint? It's a static analyze tool by Google. Uh, it was first the first version uh, was in 2011, and right now there are about 350 built-in Lint checks that all of us are going to go and be using. So, um, as to why we want to go and use it, um, it is deeply integrated in Android Studio, so we can go and use it there. It also supports Java Kotlin and the entire Android ecosystem, like layout files and Brogat files. And the nice good thing that I'm going to be talking about is that you can also go and write your own checks. And another reason there, like some of the checks here are super nice, like unused resource. It's just going to go and yell at you, hey, there's this resource that you can go and get rid of, or hard-coded text. And um, what if we actually want to go and run it? So we can use the Cradle wrapper. And then we could just say lint or lint debug if we would just want to go and run on a debug uh, variant. And then if we run it from the console, we might go and get a console report like that. So um, here there's like one thing that um, lint is complaining about. Oh, okay, okay, that one doesn't work. Basically, it's saying that uh, there's a newer version of a library available. And then it also um, tells us that there are basically two reports that are going to be generated. Uh, one is XML, one is HTML. And then uh, if we're going to go and look at the HTML report, we can go and see that basically, okay, the um, Cradle bug in for Fabric, there's a newer version available. Now, there's also a little trick that you can go and use if you want to have the dark theme in the um, HTML report. There you basically got to go and uh, pass in the custom Cradle property. Now, if we go and look at the XML report that's generated, it's basically just... Um, all of the things that we also see in the HTML report. So we see on which file the warning um, is, or the error, uh, the message, the explanation. And uh, the XML file can, for instance, be used by the Jenkins plugin. So if you're using Jenkins, um, you can just hook up to the um, plugin, and then you can go and see all of the lint warnings or errors that you might go and have in your build. Also in Android Studio, if you go and open the file, you go and see that yellow scribble or like the background that uh, you can go and, or that there's basically a warning. You can also alt enter and then you can basically change it automatically. That's uh, called the quick fix. Or you can also go and basically ignore it by using the no inspection. And uh, if you're basically gonna go and use the no inspection, Lint is gonna go know that uh, you don't wanna go and have that warning reported. Another way in order to go and ignore something is by using the Lint XML file. So um, you can now have that in your app directory. And then basically uh, every issue has like an ID, for instance, uh, unused resource. And then you can go and say, okay, um, for all of those strings that are matching that regex, I don't want to go and have this uh, check checked on. Or what you can also go and do is say uh, at the Cradle dependency check, you can go and ignore it entirely. And then another option is using a path. So you can go and specify, okay, for this layout file, I don't want to go and have that check turned on. And then you can also do the things in code. So there's a suppress lint annotation that you can go and use. This is a, actually a very bad example because this one is basically going to go and ignore all of the lint checks in the um, Java file. Also, the, the same works for Kotlin, so you can just use the same annotation. There's also another uh, feature that you can basically go and specify the, uh, the rule ID, so um, the new API on like a method. Also works the same way in Kotlin. And then there's also the, the comment no inspection that you can you know, use. So to get system service, you can also go and actually um, wire up your own uh, services in there and override it in your activity. And there's a lint check that basically checks that a constant is one of the well-defined ones. But you can actually go and use your own ones. And uh, if lint is going to go and yell at you there, you can just basically say uh, slash slash no inspection and then enrich link the wrong constant. And that one is also working the same way um, in Kotlin. And then for um, XML files, there's the tools namespace that can be used. And then it's basically tools ignore and the, the rule ID. Um, now, that was pretty much it for uh, suppressing things. Now, we can also go and use uh, the lint options in Cradle. So there's the lint options block in the, uh, Android. And there are a bunch of things, like you can also there enable and disable particular rules. You just go and um, give it the ID. 
And then the fatal error warning and ignore is basically um, there in order to go and change the severity of rules. So for instance, uh, we can say the new API is no longer an error, it's a fatal one. Or the missing translation, which used to be a fatal one, is now an error. And basically there you go and then have uh, warnings or errors. And for fatal, uh, the build is basically going to go and break when you build the uh, APK. And then um, there are also some other things like um, the abort on error. That one you usually want to go and have the truth. So when lint finds something and the lint task is executed, that one is going to go and break the build. And you can also go and propagate error, uh, warnings as errors by using the warnings as error um, property. Uh, you can also ignore the warnings entirely. And there are also some lint checks that are not enabled by default. And that one you can go and enable by using check all warnings. And in the bottom, there's also a link to all of the other options that are on the uh, lint options. So basically the Cradle DSL. Another important and cool feature that was recently added that I want to go and talk about is um, Baseline. So Baseline is basically a feature where run, lint runs through your project, collects all of the things that are reported, and it creates a baseline uh, file out of that. So here in the lint options, we say baseline, and then the file with a name. And then if we run the um, lint check again, um, basically it's going to go and find everything. It's going to go and um, generate the reports. And then you can see that um, the first time it's going to go and be running, it's going to create the baseline XML file. It's going to go and break the build, just in case this was not like uh, done on purpose. And um, it's going to generate the file, and then you usually commit it into your um, source code repository. And then um, if we look at the file, it's basically the same, more or less, like the um, XML report. So it's going to go and have a, like the description where the issue was found, uh, which line underlines it. And then if we go and run the um, lint check again, this time it's going to go and succeed. And uh, it says lint found no new issues, and one of them has been filtered out by the baseline file. And the amazing thing of that is basically if you're in a project which has like hundreds of lint warnings, you can basically go and start from scratch by using the baseline feature. Then you're going to go and get all of those filtered out. They're still going to be visible in Android Studio. And then you can start working slowly on um, uh, fixing the old things. And the moment you add some new code that might go and have some lint warnings or issues, you're going to go and see them immediately and you need to fix them. Now that was pretty much it about the theory, about all of configuring, suppressing. Now we're actually going to go and create our own lint checks. So what we're uh, going to need to do is uh, create a new uh, module, basically a lint module. And uh, it's going to be a Java library. And we're also going to use Kotlin, mainly because Kotlin is a nice language. And also half of the lint API is actually written in Kotlin. So you can go and take advantage of like name parameters, extension functions and also the deprecated annotations in which you can alt enter and then basically uh, replace to the new things. Um, then target and source com compatibility is basically Java 1.7. Then we're going to go and include the lint API and the lint checks. And then also the Kotlin and for testing we're going to use lint and lint test. Now you might be asking, yeah, why 2601? Uh, it's basically you take the Cradle plugin version, which is currently is 301. Then you add 23 to it and you have the version. So that is out of historical reasons that you need to go and add those 23. And so if you want to go and check out the new alpha 4 of 310, you basically go and add those two again together. And then, then if 3.0 is finally released for the lint uh, sources and uh, dependencies, you're going to go need to use 2601. 2610. So. Um, then uh, lint has a concept of a registry. So basically you have a registry and then you extend from a class. And in that class you're going to go and overwrite basically to get issues functions. So in that you're going to go and say, okay, those are all of the issues that I'm going to go and ship with my custom uh, lint checks. And then basically what um, we need to add is uh, into a jar, it's going to go and create a manifest attack. And for that, uh, there's the custom attribute lint registry version 2. And then you basically go and say the fully qualified name of that class. It's like com example lint rules issues registry. And uh, how lint is actually then going to go and be able to figure out things is it's going to go and look at all of the dependencies. It's going to go look into the manifest file. 
And if in that file the lint registry is there, it's going to go and instantiate that class, the issue reg registry. It is, or it knows it's of that particular type, so it can go and invoke the get, get issues functions. And from there, basically, lint is going to be able to pull out all of your issues and uh, make use of, of them. So if you want to go and uh, use that basically in your in your app or in your library, all you need to do is basically um, in the dependencies you say lint checks. It's the same as a compile or implementation API, and then you can either go and um, say the project if it's locally or just as the normal uh, Android dependency. And for library, it's also the same. Now, um, there's some more APIs that are basically provided by Lint. It's the detector and scanner. So detector is basically that abstract class that you need to go and extend from, and there lies um, like some functionality um, where you can go and take a look at resources or anything and you can also get a certain life cycle like before the files have checked and afters um, and then the, the core really lies in scanners so there are different scanners um, they basically make use of the visit pattern so there's like an XML scanner for looking at XML files they can be layout drawable or anything and then you basically have visit function like visit element, visit attribute, um, visit document. And um, also that detector, it's, it's kind of hacky. That detector is already implementing the methods of, of all of those scanners, but not actually by implementing the interface. So just the signatures are matching. So if, um, for instance, the my detector is going to go and implement the XML scanner interface, you don't need to implement all of those functions because the detector is already doing that. And um, then you can basically just go and um, take the ones that you want. Um, for the UAST scanner, for instance, um, that one is a universal abstract syntax tree. So basically what um, you will get is um, a certain tree. So your um, Kotlin or Java file is going to be abstracted into elements, which I'm also going to explain a little bit further later. Um, class scanner is for bytecode. You can also do bytecode analysis with Lint. Uh, binary resource scanner is for looking at binary resources like images. There's a resource folder scanner, so you can go and look at the resource folders like drawable, values. Um, there's a Cradle scanner um, that you can use to look at um, your Cradle build files, so you can also go and write checks for that. And other file scanner is for any other type of file, for instance, uh, ProGuard files. So let's go and look at the first check. It's a resource check, and basically it's going to go and detect when you use a, a caller without a, a resource. And one advantage of that is that you might want to go and have all of your callers in one file. So if, for instance, you're going to go and switch uh, to implementing dark theme, you only need to go and look through one file and then have all of them. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to create an issue. And the first parameter, raw color, is the ID. That's also the one that will be used if you want to go and suppress it. Then there's like a, a title and a description. Uh, the next one, correctness, is the category. There are like a bunch defined, like correctness, security, performance. Um, the next one is the level between 1 and 10. You can just use any value there. Uh, the next parameter is the severity. So it's a, is it an error, is it fatal, a warning? And then the next parameter is the implementation. So you basically create an implementation of your detector. Uh, here's the raw color detector. And then you give it a scope. So we want to go and be running that detector on all of the resource files. And then we, our detector, we basically extend from that abstract detector um, class. And then we implement the XML scanner. And then uh, one of the functions that we can go and use is we can narrow down where we want this check to be running. So we can say, okay, this, on, this check only applies to layout files. So we get the resource folder type. Um, some possible other values are the, the values, layout, drawable, um, all of those. And in this check, we say, okay, we only want to go and be looking at uh, layouts. Then the next thing is uh, which uh, elements are applicable for this. So elements is basically like a view. A view in XML is just an element, the same way as a linear layout is. And uh, for this one, we want to go and look at all of the elements. And then there's this uh, visit element function that's uh, making use of the visitor pattern. 
And there you basically get a context. The context is a bit like the Android context, so you can do a lot of things with those, on those. Um, the element is the actual element, so you don't get like the, the raw XML passed in, you get an abstraction element. Then we can go and uh, look at all of the attributes by basically looking at the length, making an, an in sequence out of that in Kotlin, mapping that to uh, the attributes, since attributes is not uh, implementing iterable or anything. So you have to go and work around that. And then basically the next thing that we can go and do is uh, we filter. So we look at the, the value. And the value in that case could be a color. And if it's a color, it's gonna go and pass through by using the regex. And then basically for each, uh, we can go and report that issue. So we use context report. Uh, we give it the issue uh, that we created above. Uh, we pass in the it. In that case is uh, the attribute. So it's like the, the scope where it is um, gonna be applied to. And the location is uh, basically that part of the code that you're gonna get highlighted in the IDE. And um, you basically can use the context for getting the value location. And then you can go and pass in a custom uh, string message. And basically all that is the code that needs to be done in order to go and implement this check. It's super easy, it fits even on one slide. And what's even better is that this can be super easily unit tested. So um, lint uh, is basically like a function and we can basically uh, create like a small project by using that. So we say lint, we go and add some files and the first one is gonna be an XML file. And then we basically pass in the, the, the path, so like rest, layout, layout XML, and then the content. So the first thing that we're gonna go and pass in is actually a text view which does not use any color. And then um, we can basically go and say, okay, we wanna run this issue on it, then we run it, and we expect clean. So nothing should get reported. So if you were actually gonna go and use this in your IDE, and that check wouldn't be triggered because it can go and find the color resource. Then we can also go and look at one check where there is a, a text color. So basically it's the hashtag FFF. And then um, we can run it, and this time we don't expect clean, we basically expect that there's um, something that is gonna be linted. So, and then here, uh, what you can usually go and do is you just let it run once and then you copy paste the thing into the, the unit test. So here, you can actually see also all of the information that is then gonna go be shown in the report. So you see the line and the little tilde scribbles here, are, that is the location. So the location is then the um, hashtag FF where the color is. And then you also see there were no errors but a warning. And then also the custom message that we uh, supplied is the should be using a color resource instead. So also here, testing that is super easy. And that's basically like writing a, a small lint check like that is like 30 minutes tops. It's super easy. Then uh, the next one that I get is um, so that all of the IDs are in lower camel case format. So they're all um, like the same. So they're like not using snake case or any other type of case. So we also go and create our issue again, uh, ID, basically that is always the same to set up. Um, then we can use a layout detector. Uh, we say instead of using the get applicable elements, we use attributes. So ID for instance is an attribute and then we just go and, go and say okay. Uh, we can use the constant which is provided by lint for the ID. And then the last part is uh, implementing the visit attribute. And what's gonna go and happen in there is um, attribute value is sometimes the add plus ID slash and then the name, and sometimes without the plus. So there's actually a lint utility that uh, can be used for um, uh, stripping the ID prefix. So it's gonna go and get rid of that, so only the ID um, we can go and get. And if that one is like camel case, or if it's not, or actually if it's not lower camel case should be, then we can go and report that issue. And then we, again, pass in the, um, the issue, the, the attribute, the location, and the message. And also testing that is super easy. So again, we um, pass in the path, uh, like a te uh, test case for the text view here, where the ID is lower camel case. We run uh, it over the issue and we expect clean. Nothing gets reported. And then uh, here, if it's something in snake case, uh, we can go and run the issue and then we again expect that lint is gonna go and find one of the warnings. 
Um, another one uh, is the wrong layout name detector. So um, what I like to go and have is like a certain prefix for all of the layout XML files so that you can go and see, okay, this one actually is belonging to activity view dialog. Um, and we can basically go and uh, define like a allowed prefix list with all of the prefix that are allowed. We go and uh, create our issue and then we can also go and basically in the description say which ones are allowed. And then uh, we also go and make use of the layout detector and instead of visiting an element or an attribute now, we're gonna go and visit the entire document, which in this case is the file. And then we can basically go and check if uh, in the allowed prefixes, if none of those match with the file name, then we know that the file name is not prefixed and then we can also go and report the issue. And uh, it's basically the same. Again, we pass the issue, then the scope, the location, and the custom message. Testing this is also the same. Here we don't even need to go and supply that match of uh, XML layout content, just the file name. This time it is prefixed, so it's gonna go and be clean. And then if there's a, like a file that is just called random, obviously it's not prefixed correctly, and then we can also go and expect uh, that it should be prefixed. Um, now UAST. So UST is like a universal abstract syntax tree, and um, basically if you have your Java or Kotlin file, uh, what is gonna go and happen, it's gonna go and analyze it and then create those um, interfaces uh, for you. So for instance, if you have like a hello world in Kotlin with like an if expression, then you would actually go and get an if expression. That's like an interface, and if expression is actually an expression, so you, that is gonna go and extend from that interface, and the expression can also be annotated, so it can have annotations on it, and then um, basically, what you can go and get is a tree where you basically get like a list of things that are defined. So even like white space is you white space or a comment is then you comment. You can go and iterate over it and you can also go and navigate your way around it. So uh, one uh, use case would be that the test methods are not gonna go and start with test since they already have the test annotation. And um, here again, we go and create our uh, custom issue this time uh, our detector is gonna go and implement the UAST scanner. And then we have the get applicable UAST types. Um, that one is basically saying, okay, which of those types that are defined we want to be called for. So in this uh, case, it's basically we want to be called for every method. So we say, uh, yeah, it's a list of method. Then uh, we need to create a UAST handler and there uh, we're just gonna go and uh, create that handler. It's gonna go and implement the U element handler, uh, uh, or it's gonna um, extend from that class, and it's gonna go and take the Java context. And also that um, element handler is gonna go and have those wizard methods. So um, if we have our code, and then the linchick is gonna be run against it, basically the system is gonna go and figure out, okay, we don't need to call this lincheck for everything, we just need to go and call it for all of the methods that are defined. And then it's basically gonna create the handler, and in that handler, the, the visit method is gonna go and be called for us. So here, um, there's an evaluator um, on the context that we can go and use to get all of the annotations on the methods, so we're gonna go and get that. Then uh, on, the, on all of those methods, uh, we're gonna get the qualified name, so like uh, org.junit.test, we're gonna split it by the dot and take the last one, um, which is then gonna be just the name, so like the test. And then once we have that, we filter over it and we only wanna go and report it if it's a test and also if the method starts with test. And then for each of those, uh, we're basically gonna go and report it again. So we use the context and then this time we can use the context get name location for getting the um, scribbles underneath the method. So um, first time we're gonna go and do a negative test. So if it's just a, a function that start with test but it's not annotated, um, we basically um, are gonna go and run against it and we expect clean. Note that uh, here now we're using lint files Java instead of XML because it's a Java file and it also has support for Kotlin. So if you write KT, you can also go and test against Kotlin files. Now, um, since we don't uh, have a, ref a reference to the um, Check unit test annotations, we can actually go and stop it. 
So we can just go and create our own um, annotation there. We give it the identical package name to the one that is defined from uh, JUnit and then also the um, interface, so like the annotation declaration. And then we can actually go and uh, use that here too. So we say lint files, then we're gonna go and put in the stub here, also the Java reference, and then we can just normally, as you would do in your normal code, um, import the test uh, annotation, and then uh, have your test class, and then you can uh, have the test method. Uh, you also go and add the issue, let it run. And then uh, you're basically gonna go and expect that it's gonna go and uh, get a warning here. And then the scribbles are also there. Now an, another awesome thing that they added in uh, 3.0 are quick fixes. So um, all of the, like we can basically go from our lint check, we can go and supply quick fixes ourselves. So um, another check uh, is like if there's a missing XML header, um, basically we wanna go and add the XML header. So again, we create our issue, uh, our detector, XML scanner, uh, we visit the document, and then uh, we can go and read the, from the context, we can get the current file that we're uh, seeing, and then we can read that file, and if it doesn't start with the XML header, we basically know that we need to go and add it. So the first thing that we're gonna go and do is this time we're gonna create a location by hand. There's also the location um, class with a grade and then we're basically saying on that file from the beginning, so like zero to all the way to the end of the content, the content length, uh, that is basically the entire location that is gonna be flagged. And then we can go and also report that issue, um, give it a document, the scope, the location, the custom message, and then uh, we can basically use the fix function and there are different types, so you can actually go and also make group fixes, so you can go and change multiple things within like one uh, file, but this time we only wanna go and replace something. So we uh, use the replace functionality, we give it a name, that is the name that's gonna be shown in um, Android Studio 2. Uh, the text is basically the text that we're gonna go and got from the file, and then we wanna replace it with the basically the text prefixed with the um, XML header. And then we build it and that's basically all. Also here, we're gonna start with a negative fir test first. Uh, so we go and have a resource which has the XML header and we run and we expect clean. And then uh, here we have another resource uh, file that has not the XML header. So the first thing that we can go and do is uh, again the, using the expect function so we can say, okay, it's missing the XML header. And we can also go and check the diffs. So there's the expect fi fix diff function. And that one is basically using internally uh, the git patch file. So uh, that format here is a uh, git patch. So um, here in line zero, we wanna go and add the header. And then we're basically gonna go and add that uh, one line here with the XML header. Now, if we go and look again in Android Studio, um, the entire file is gonna be flagged. We can alt enter into it, and then we can also go and use our quick fix that we provided via at XML header. And then if we basically go and click on that, uh, it's gonna go and automatically integrate uh, for us. Another amazing thing is that uh, the inspections, all of those uh, lint checks that you wrote are also gonna go and be bundled in Android Studio itself. So if you look and search for them in the inspections, you can actually go and find your own lint checks that you wrote there. And uh, what comes with that is that you can basically use the analyze function of Android Studio on your entire project. So you let it go and run through. And then here you can see that the missing XML header found, few, uh, found five of the XML files that are not using it. And then you can actually go and supply the quick fixes on all of them uh, immediately. So you don't need to go and do it by hand. So if there's like a pattern that you would like to go and use, but not that many places are using it, one way would be to go and write a lint check, which just doesn't take long, then you let it run basically against your entire project, and then you can let lint fix all of the things for you. Now, uh, I also wanna go and talk about some nifty helpers. Uh, it's just good to know about them. Once you start writing a few of those checks, um, they're basically gonna go and have some functionality that you might wanna go and use. One of those uh, was the strip ID prefix and lint utils. 
um, that, that we used uh, in SDK utils are also all of the layouts defined. You don't need to go and put in like Android view uh, view if you want to go and check whether that element is of view type or not. All of those strings also constrained layout, they are all defined there. XML utils is like for doing a few XML things like maybe adding an attribute to something. UAST is uh, for Kotlin and Java files again and those evaluators are basically um, evaluating certain things. So like the constant evaluator, what it can do is if, if you pass a parameter to a function, uh, basically like it could be hard coded like 200, then you can go and get that value instantly by using the normal UAST methods. But if for instance that um, parameter is defined via constant, like on top of the class files, then uh, you wouldn't actually go and get the value. And what you can go and use there is the constant evaluator. So it's actually gonna go and try to resolve um, where this parameter is coming from. Also if it's like coming from a method uh, that was defined within. Now um, also some uh, 310 uh, goodies. So um, there's a fully back Kotlin support. Uh, right now in 3.0, Kotlin still doesn't work on, in all checks uh, from the command line. So for instance, the unused resources still doesn't work uh, in 3.0. And uh, the reason for that is that um, when Lint is running from the command line, it doesn't go and know how to compile Kotlin. And they actually had some class path issues and what also that was one of the reasons why JetBrains initially ported all of those lint checks on their own. So they were always like a few checks behind. And uh, what they actually, what Google and JetBrains uh, started doing then is they worked together and basically also enabled uh, letting lint run completely on the command line. So uh, in 3.0, um, all of the lint checks, they're gonna go and work in Android Studio itself because it knows how to, how to go and basically compile Kotlin and make it work with lint. And then 310 is also gonna go and work from the command line. Um, another cool thing that they uh, announced is that you can also go and use lint now on your server, for instance. So there's a, a lint plugin that you can go and use, uh, you can edit, uh, come Android uh, tools to build Gradle, and then you apply the uh, lint plugin, and then you can also go and uh, add your own lint checks again by using lint checks and then you can go and use the Cradle wrapper. Basically, the, the plugin is gonna go and generate the lint task for you, and you can let it run through. Another cool thing that they uh, are working on is a Calcraft API. That one is basically for doing complex um, analysis of like a certain code that is being used from uh, multiple files. So they can go and see like, okay, for instance, there's this uh, check return value and uh, what is it actually, there is already a check for that, but it's not really that performant. And they started switching now to using the callcraft API, so they can go and see, okay, on that method, where is this method actually being called? And that one is done by using the callcraft API. It's still uh, super experimental, and but they're gonna go and uh, start working on that. And also with that, they can go and uh, add some cool checks, maybe for like, if threads are accessing the same field, and they're like, there's like some synchronization issue, they can also go and uh, use the callcraft API then later in order to go and basically detect, okay, there might be something that you're not aware of. Now, uh, a few things uh, for the future. Um, they wanna go and improve the quick fix API a lot more, so you can go and also, for instance, um, fix something across multiple files. So if you, for instance, uh, wanna have a quick fix for the ID, that you also go and look, okay, where is the ID being referenced in Java and Kotlin code? And that you can also go and then change those. And uh, they all, the registry API for um, defining what your issues are, they also wanna go and improve it. So they also wanna go and find a way to make it backwards compatible. Because uh, what was basically happening in, is that in Android Studio 3, they switched uh, to UAST. So before that, they were not using that, they were using uh, PSI, which is something that's uh, also developed by JetBrains, but that one doesn't support Kotlin. So they um, needed to go and switch and port all of the issues to UAST. And uh, what they're now trying to go and do is um, also make a stable and better API. Because the, the Lint API is not uh, final yet. They're still working on that. And uh, also, that's also why they, they switched to Kotlin in the API, because it allows a lot more things to be um, basically uh, migrated and solved easier. 
And another thing they want to go and add is Kotlin script support. So uh, as you might know, you can also do your build files in Kotlin, KDS, and they also want to go and let you be able to go and analyze those. And then the last part is finish the call graph API. Now, uh, some of the resources, there's the, the Lint uh, general page on uh, developer Android, that's pretty good as a starter. There's also a Lint dev community where the, like one of the only one, or like there's only one guy really that does Lint, Tor. He's like also the owner of the group there and he's like super responsive and he answers a lot. And you can always go and ask him for like certain things that you, or like even issues. Uh, the next one is, um, also uh, the bug tracker, so you can also go and create the uh, lint issues. And then there are two talks, basically the one was from Tor, the, um, like the developer of lint. Um, he's, he talked at KotlinConf about lint. And then there's also one from um, Rodriguez from Square, uh, where he talked at DreadCon New York about lint. Um, I also put some uh, of my lint rules open source, so you can also go and look, at, uh, look and have a look at those. And also all of the Android uh, lint checks that are basically, that you use every day, they're also completely open source. So you can go and see, okay, how are they actually implementing unused resource? And then uh, if you wanna go and do something similar, you can go and look, okay, which APIs are they using and uh, how you can go and achieve that. Yeah, and uh, that was basically it. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask them. Uh, probably the, the missing XML header. I just played around with it a few days ago, so I haven't had time. But uh, what, I, what I've seen is uh, Timber, the logging library, um, they have some pretty good uh, quick fixes there. So you can actually go and compose those. So you can say, okay, first I wanna go and fix this, and then I wanna fix this. So they have some support for that, but um, also Tor is aware that uh, it has a uh, limit. So you cannot like change everything but also testing support is really good and also he's pretty open. Like he created a document in the uh, community for uh, like the proposal, what you can do and do. And he also asked, okay, what are things that you might wanna go and do? So you can also say, okay, I would like to be able to go and change this and this and this. And then he might go and come up with an API that everyone can use then. Um, I know for a fact that uh, you can go and use the resource prefix. So uh, for instance, you can say that all of your resources, they should be prefixed. That's super handy in a, uh, like a library that all of those are prefixed. And there's a lint check that checks this. So there must be some way. And I think that um, you can actually go and look at the lint checks and go and see how it figures out. But I think that only the defined ones from Android because uh, they need to pass it from the DSL basically to Kotlin. And I don't think that they've got an API for that yet where you can basically go and define your own uh, arguments or like parameters that you want to go and pass on. But that would be super handful, yeah. Are all the linters in Android Studio implemented like this? Yeah, so basically they're all going to use the detector. So um, what's going to go and happen is actually when you, you run lint from Android Studio, um, they're gonna go and execute the checks. And they're gonna, like, there's also like a client interface and there are two implementations. There's the client implementation for Android Studio and the one for the command line. And then, uh, but both of them are using the detector API. And also, um, if you have a look here on some of the resources, they're all implemented the same. They're all using the detector and the scanner and they're composing them and making use of them. Um, so, what I could also go and do is... So, my, my basically main question will be, if there is a libraries uh, also for checking how Kotlin code files are being used and detected. Detect, yeah. So, now for me it seems like we don't need them and everything implemented Lint can. Yeah, that's but true. Yeah, 
Yeah, um, to so detect, I'm actually also a contributor of the art library and they started working like super early, like I think one and a half years ago. And um, back then it wasn't clear whether uh, Android Lint is gonna go and support it or not. So they were actually building their own thing, but I'm totally agreeing with you that, especially now that you can also use the Lint checks uh, on server side with the Lint plugin, I totally agree that we should go and maybe use one infrastructure. Um, KT Lint is a bit different in the case that it only, it's like check style for Java, so it only checks like white spaces and stuff, and I think that's pretty nasty to do in Lint. So, um, but, but it's still possible to do this in Lint. Yeah, so here for instance, um, let me enter the presentation mode. So here, for instance, there's the, the, the method, the u method that you can basically go and then you can also get all of the children's. So for instance, a method usually has like a body and then you can also go and say, okay, I wanna have the, the UAST body. And then you can basically go and navigate down so you can actually go and analyze everything. And then uh, the UAST body is like uh, an expression and that expression uh, then has like, um, elements or like an element and then they're basically like a, a bunch of functions that you can basically go and use to get the contents actually of the, the method. So you can go and analyze everything, yeah. So here's like uh, SDK utils, they're all documented, but uh, what I did is I, I went through them once and basically tried to go and find a few things. And you can also go and use the, basically look at the, the methods. And for instance, for the uh, Java Evaluator. So uh, Java Evaluator actually supports both. Uh, Kotlin and Java, it's just that the class didn't get renamed to uh, either. But um, here I like, um, so you can basically check like whether a class extends something or whether it implements an interface. Because actually that to check is not that trivial because if you basically check whether foo implements interface bar, bar could actually be implemented by another interface because that interface is implementing that interface as a super interface or you have like a class which implements an interface and over that interface you get it. So um, it's just best to go and look at them once and try to memorize it and then you can go and work your way down from there. But also, they're usually you, the, most of the checks that I write are for XML files and sometimes for Java or Kotlin but even then they're like so tiny that you don't even need to go and make like a deep analysis of really a lot of things. But if you want to go and do that, yeah, use those classes. <laughs> 